ಹಲೋ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅಗೇನ್ ದ ಇ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದ ಅಂಬ್ರೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟಿ ಯು ಐ ಎಮ್ ಪಿ ಆರ್ ಹಂಪಿ ಓಳಿ ಹೆಡ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಕೆ ಎಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಗೋಕ್ಟೆನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಬೆಳಗಾವಿ ಡಿಯರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಏಟೀನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟಿನ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫೌರ್ ಇಯರ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜೆಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಲೆಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಜೆಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ರೆಡಿ ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಯಾಡ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ಟು ಬಿ ರೆಡಿ ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಯಾಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮೋರ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲೆ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಮೋರ್ ಬಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸಿಂಬಾಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮೋರ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಟು ರೈಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಲೆಸನ್ ನಂಬರ್ ನೈನ್ ಲೆಸನ್ ನೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ತ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಯಿಂಗ್ ನಾವು ಝೆಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಎಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಕ್ವಿಕ್ ರಿವಿಜನ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ ರಿವಿಜನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಡಿಫೈಂಡ್ ವಿ ಡಿಫೈಂಡ್ any function of n we can transform into some function of z why are the transform known as z transform a capital big z i write by multiplying this n function by some z function my dear students i told you can go on choosing this uh, if at all you want to create your own transform you can create your own transform by choosing different weight functions kernel of functions so there are many transformations after all basic need of transformation is we cannot work do the work in time domain for example in n domain we'll transform to some frequency domain like z transform especially i am talking in view of uh, signals in the system suppose uh, in communication theory in electronics then uh, n will be changed to z language and the work will be done in z language at the end the answer is transformed by taking inverse transform into n language so now that is the basic coding is done in a coded language the work is done at last the answers or output is decoded now this is added from n equal to 0 to infinity we should not forget that this value of u is 0 for u minus 1 u minus 2 u minus 3 and negative suffixes of n afterwards using this definition first we found z transform of a raised to n using the formula it reduced to uh, geometric progression so using that we got it as z by z minus a so we got familiar using this formula instead of a you can go on writing 2 raised to n instead of a 3 raised to n so on and so forth you can write so instead of a you should write here 2 z by z minus 2 so instead of 2 you will get 3 here z by z minus 3 so i can go to negative suffixes also so next example z z raised to minus 2 raised to n so this was plus 2 raised to n so z minus 2 so this becomes z plus 2 so if i put a equal to 1 basics we should not forget many times z transform of 1 will have to use which becomes z by z minus 1 but whereas interestingly whereas uh, interestingly because it is uh, many times uh, misunderstood or not used written properly instead of plus 1 if i write minus if i write minus 1 minus 1 please then that is instead of z minus 1 here it becomes it becomes z plus z plus 1 z plus 1 now uh continuing this part little more so we have also proved that instead of one here some constant if i write z transform of 8 it becomes you can take 8 out and z transform of 1 which is 8 times z by z minus 1 in general for a k constant 
z transform of k is k into z by z minus 1 where some k is a real constant the number any number you like so that uh, if at all i write it can be this can be fractions also these can be fractions also for example if at all you want to take uh, these things as fractions what happens is uh, let me choose uh, let me choose uh, black from this if at all we take suppose the z transform of uh, some uh, fraction half raised to n z transform of half raised to n or z transform of half suppose instead of k half so half into z by z minus 1 furthermore here i was talking here i was talking instead of uh, 2 raised to n 3 raised to n if i write uh, it as uh, some uh, 3 by 2 raised to n so it is z by z minus 3 by 2 it is all question of getting used to it that's why i am rewriting z transform of if write uh, minus sign minus sign to that 3 by 2 3 by 2 raised to n and that uh, becomes z by z by instead of a minus 3 by 2 that that becomes plus 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 so furthermore we also uh, studied that uh, so don't forget z of 1 z of z of 1 z of constant z of 1 don't forget z of minus 1 don't forget z of k don't forget so don't forget many things that means uh, you be familiar to that i don't tell you remember you be familiar so now using this uh, using this uh, z of uh, using this uh, today's example starts using this z of a raised to n equal to z by z minus a z by z minus a let me prove some important examples find find z transform of cos hyperbolic n theta and the sine hyperbolic n theta so we have proved instead of hyperbolic simply cos n theta sine n theta and amazingly these also these also look same but we'll be using uh, this as well as uh, the basic definition of cos hyperbolic n theta i'll do this and similarly i'll give this homework to you now now cos of hyperbolic of something is e raised to that plus e raised to minus that divided by 2. Now we will be using some basic laws of indices learnt in school also please. All the, all the things what you learnt basics will be now and then will be useful. So now if I take z transform on both sides find z transform on find z transform on both sides z transform on both sides so whatever is left hand side z of this and whatever is right hand side z transform of that z transform means n language we are trying to convert in terms of z language now right hand side if i concentrate i can take half out these are all common linearity property i can take z transform of first function I can drag this z transform inside z transform of first function second one is z transform of second function so that I can write this as z transform of first function e raised to n theta this plus z transform of second function e raised to minus n theta so here we use uh, basic laws of indices z transform of this can be written as something raised to n which is e raised to theta raised to n it becomes n theta only plus this also can be written as something raised to n so that this remaining e raised to minus theta sits here 
Now, what is the variable? See, see here, variable is, variable is n. So, if it is not n, which is not n, that is theta acts as a constant. So, this inside, inside whatever is there, inside whatever is there, these two act as constant, something like, something like z of a raised to n. So, this a is a, this a is a constant, this a is a constant. So, instead of a, now what is the formula for z of a raised to n? Today only I wrote z by z minus a. So, instead of a, instead of a, I will be writing, I will be writing e raised to theta here and e raised to minus theta here. So, here we go half of this is a z by z minus a here a is e raised to theta and here z by z minus again a is e raised to minus theta so now we have converted in terms of z language remains is uh, just a algebraic simplification i can drag this z out so z by 2 i can cross multiply these two so z minus, so it looks like this now, 1 upon z minus e raised to theta plus 1 upon z minus e raised to minus theta. Now usual simplification, LCM simplify, this is equal to z by 2. Cross multiply for the LCM. So z minus e raised to minus theta plus z minus e raised to theta. So when I cross multiply, what I am going to get here inside, this is equal to z by 2 as it is z plus z 2 times z minus into bracket exponential functions. So denominator, denominator square and z term so z term is one here and z term is one more here so if we take z common you will get e raised to theta e raised to minus theta so both having negative sign e raised to theta plus e raised to minus theta back you can see minus z e raised to theta and minus z e raised to minus theta remains is Multiplication of these two, e raised to theta, e raised to minus theta, become e raised to 0, 1, minus of minus plus 1, with a little algebra. So, you were taught algebra from 7th standard. So, everything will be useful. Now, we will have to come to the basics again. See, what is cos, what is cos hyperbolic, what is cos hyperbolic theta e raised to theta e raised to minus theta divided by 2 this numerator is there here so we need divided by 2 here i'll take drag this half out inside here i'll drag this half inside so 2 and 2 getting cancelled z as it is minus e raised to theta plus e raised to minus theta divided by 2 so numerator no problem denominator there is no 2 here, so multiply and divide. So whatever you want, get it. Z square minus Z multiply by 2 and divide by 2, which is e raised to theta plus e raised to minus theta plus 1. So here is the completion of, here is the completion of Z transformation of cos hyperbolic function, which is, which is, with little simplification, Z into bracket Z minus it is exactly same structure without hyperbolic. Without h, if you go on removing this h, same thing you get z square minus this 2z will remain 2z cos. See here we go cos hyperbolic theta plus 1. So let me apply uh, just a note as a note. Let me apply a damping rule. So if I multiply a raised to n to this inside whatever is there, if I multiply a raised to n 
So this cos hyperbolic uh, n theta, then wherever z is there, z by a, z by a, z by a, z by a, you have to go on writing, which is uh, if I write the structure as it is, z minus cos hyperbolic uh, theta. See, after transformation, there should not be n here. That is very basic because the basic definition is n function we are transforming to z function. So this square minus 2z cos hyperbolic plus 1. But because of change in the domain, the change in the codomain is you have multiplied here, you have to divide here, you have magnified here, you have to contract and reverse it back. So these things are taken into many relay functions, TV functions, all these things. So remaining is uh, if you simplify, taking LCM and all that, this looks like this. Z square, Z into Z minus A into cos hyperbolic theta whole divided by Z square minus 2AZ plus A square. Very, very, very similarly, very, very similarly, try to prove using the formula, using the formula, using the formula, sine hyperbolic theta is e raised to theta minus e raised to minus theta by 2. Using this formula on the same lines, you prove that z sine hyperbolic n theta that is z transform of sin hyperbolic n theta should be z into sin hyperbolic theta divided by z square denominator same z square minus 2z sin hyperbolic theta the previous we left something let us see that plus one see here what we left in the previous this cos hyperbolic theta we left here please correct cos hyperbolic theta multiplication here. Now, again, using damping function, you can prove that if I multiply by a raised to n, this looks like this. This looks very similar to, so use a wherever z is there, you put a by z, a by z, a z sin hyperbolic theta whole divided by z square minus 2 a z uh, sorry, this is again cos hyperbolic theta. Denominator is not changing. Minus 2 a z cos hyperbolic theta plus 1 plus a square here. So these two you can prove. Now, very, very similarly, very, very similarly using uh, basic functions and all that, let us have some more, some more important examples. Some more for practice, for examination point of view, some more important uh, examples which is uh, revising all the things what you have learnt and furthermore we will go one step ahead first example can you find find z transformation of half raised to n plus 1 by 3 raised to n i think many of you can now now z transformation of first function plus second function is equal to is equal to z transformation of first function plus z transformation of second function so now we know that we know that we know that z transformation of a raised to n is z by z minus a so using this formula using this uh, formula so here also this is this is this is our a in the formula so a raised to n so wherever a is there half here and 1 by 3 here so shall we do that so left hand side z transformation of this raised to n plus this raised to n that is half and 1 by 3 raised to n equal to z by z minus a here a is half plus z by z minus a so remains the simplification why not we should do the simplification so algebra so this 2 comes here 
टू जेड माइनस वन दिस डिवाइडेड बाई टू एल राइट हियर सिमिलरली थ्री जेड माइनस वन डिवाइड बाई थ्री हाई शुड राइट हियर थ्री जेड नाउ अगेन इफ आई टेक इफ आई टेक दिस जेड कॉमन टू बाय टू जेड माइनस वन लेट एस डू इट सिंपल थ्री बाय थ्री जेड माइनस वन नाउ यू नो द एल सी एम पैटर्न फ्रॉम स्कूल लेवल अगेन जेड इन टू सो दीज टू मल्टीप्लीकेशन इन द डिनोमिनेटर एंड दिस क्रॉस मल्टीप्लीकेशन विच इज टू टाइम्स थ्री जेड माइनस वन प्लस थ्री टाइम्स टू जेड माइनस वन यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट दैट जेड टर्म कॉन्स्टेंट टर्म so that if i multiply this equal to z into denominator as it is or denominator also you can multiply z square term z term minus 2z and minus 3z minus 5z constant term minus of minus plus 1 so here 6z plus 6z this becomes a 12z then minus 2 minus 3 Minus five. Shall we write this as the answer? At the most, we can multiply z inside. What we did, my dear students, we applied this formula. We applied this formula. So applying that formula, wherever a is there, z by z minus a. So linearity property, z transform of first function plus z transform of second function, that made us to write, and little bit of algebraic simplification. So we got this. Shall we go to the next one very very similar one more next one z transform of z transformation of can you do this uh, example 4 raised to n plus 8 they are simple just you have to remember the formula now find find z transform of this now The solution part, z transformation of four is to n plus eight. First thing is using linear linearity property. Z transform of just like derivative of first function plus derivative of second function. <coughs> Sorry, z transform of these two separately. Again, using uh, uh, using z transform of a is to n equal to z by z minus a. So in this case, a becomes four. Now again, using z transform of a constant is k k z by z minus one. Here k becomes eight. So z transform of four is to n plus eight looks like this: z by z minus four plus eight into z by z minus one. You have done it. At the most, you can simplify. Not to worry that. So. some more examples which gives us uh, practice suppose suppose i do next example like this okay find z transformation of cos of not hyperbolic cos of n pi by 2 some n function plus some constant pi by 4 so i have to recall some formula here first of all what formula i will recall is two formula one is one is cos of n theta z transform of that so what is the corresponding Z function. This is n function. Corresponding Z function is Z into Z minus cos whole divided by Z square minus two Z cos theta plus one. So here it is n theta. So this becomes theta. Theta is pi by two. Also, also we have to recall. Okay, we have to recall cos of cos of a plus b. Cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. 
that is these a and b are here cos a cos b minus sin a sin b you have to apply so with these two formula we are ready to find okay similarly sign of this you can do as a homework so in the previous example did i give you the homework no let us see i'll come back to that so yes i had given this homework without fail you do this uh, uh, without fail you do this now coming back to this jet transformation of jet transformation of cos of cos of something like uh, a plus b cos of a plus b is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b so corresponding a and b cos a cos b cos a cos b sin a sin a sin b with little attention now z transformation of this i should not forget this z i should not forget to write so that both sides is equal to a z transformation of this because only the expansion of this equal to this is written right hand side so z transformation of first function plus z transform or minus z transformation of second function so can you write that this is a constant cos of pi by 4 which is 1 by root 2 so 1 by root 2 z transformation of cos n theta theta is pi by 2 minus sin n pi by 4 also this is 1 by root 2 this is 1 by root 2 write it 1 by root 2 and afterwards z transformation of sin z transformation of sin of n pi by 2 so we have to recall z transformation of sin n theta also so if it is z transformation of sin n theta can you recall it denominator is same z sin theta divided by denominator same z square minus 2 z cos theta plus 1 so now using these two formula wherever theta is there pi by 2 pi by 2 pi by 2 you have to go on writing because n theta this is theta n theta this is theta so that please see observe 1 by root 2 corresponding z function after transforming no n only z z into bracket z minus cos theta theta is pi by 2 whole divided by z square minus 2 z cos theta theta is pi by 2 so plus 1 so what i applied wherever theta is there n pi by 2 so here pi by 2 so wherever theta is there pi by 2 pi by 2 i went on writing similarly here now i have to write wherever theta is there pi by 2 pi by 2 pi by 2 i have to go on writing so this becomes now minus of 1 by root 2 z transformation of this z sin theta theta is pi by 2 whole divided by denominator same so let me write z square minus 2z cos of theta plus 1 now wherever cos pi by 2 is there we will have to write 0 so z transformation of LHS looks like this 1 by root 2 if I write common this 1 by root 2 if I write common this becomes 0 so z into z z square remains whole divided by z square this is 0 0 here plus so this is 0 z square plus 1 is remaining that is first one minus sine of pi by 2 is 1 so minus z is remaining here whole divided by z square plus 1 as the denominators are same you can add up the functions they look like this z transformation of 
therefore cos of n pi by 2 plus pi by 4 at last is 1 by root 2 common denominator numerator z square minus z is the final is the final final answer so this is the final answer so why not you should try z transformation of sine of n pi by 2 plus pi by 4 very very similarly you try this without fail so now we are doing this to revise revise our previous knowledge next example in the same lines find find can you do this z transformation of n upon 3 raised to n plus plus 2 raised to n n square so let me revise all your z transformations of the type of the type uh, of the type z of n z of n z of n square z of n cube z of n raised to 4 let me take a pause can you write it can you write it first z by z minus 1 raised to 2 second z square plus z by z minus 1 raised to 3 third z square plus 4 z z cube plus 4 z square plus z by whatever is there this raised to 1 extra 4 so here 1 here 2 here 2 here 3 denominators are always same z minus 1 only but if it is 4 here if it is 4 here this becomes 5 and only the numerators if it is raised to 4 it start from raised to 4 and goes on decreasing up to z you have to only remember these coefficients so which i will repeat the coefficients now 11 z square plus z so what are the coefficients you have to you have to remember here the coefficient of this is 1 1 z here the coefficients are 1 1 z square plus z here the coefficients are 1 4 1 z cube plus 4 z square plus z here the coefficients are 1 11 11 11 1 z raised to 4 plus 11 z cube plus 11 z square plus 1 now especially n and n square are useful now i will come back to the example after this uh, after this basics so we got revised we remembered remembered these formulae now now we are asked to find z transformation of i'm rewriting n by 3 raised to n instead of 3 it may be 6 no problem and 2 raised to n n square instead of 2 it may be some 10 no problem first of all linearity property z transformation of first function plus z transformation of second function which is n by 3 raised to n 2 raised to n into n square now now first let me consider z transformation of z transformation of n which just now i wrote the formula z transformation of n is here z by z minus 1 whole square so shall i write so here we are applying the damping rule also so let me remind you if at all i divide by means uh, z by 3 raised to n which sometimes is taken as z transformation of 3 raised to minus n into sorry here it is n so this change wherever n, n is there you multiplied or divided by 3 raised to n so if you divide here this side you have to multiply that is this 3 makes it 3z 3z if it is 4 it makes it 4z 4z see this so what the changes are there first i'll write that structure as it is
first I'll write the structure as it is, which is so because of because of this change three raised to n, this three makes it three z three z. So first one I found, first one I found. Now second one, second one. So let me consider it as RHS, okay, and this as one. Now consider, now consider, consider again Z transformation of Z transformation of second one here. N square. Just now we wrote the formula. N square means start from Z square. Z square plus Z something raised to three. So Z minus one raised to three. Now, if it is N square, if I make the corresponding change, for the corresponding change, usually first I write structure as it is. Then let us incorporate the changes later on. Z square plus Z. The same thing I am writing. Z minus one whole cube. So what is the change we are doing here is we are magnifying it, multiplying. So correspondingly, reverse function will have to divide here, divide here, divide here with uh, little simplification, which we have done many times taking LCM. This starts looking like this now. So this is a uh, two Z square. plus 2 square means 4z whole divided by z minus 2 whole cube. Now we found both of these. One is z transformation of 2 raised to n into n square, which I call it as 2 result and even 1 result, result number 1. Result number 1 and 2 we incorporate in RHS so that whatever is asked we are going to get z transformation of therefore n by 3 raised to n plus 2 raised to n n square. The first one, the first one was if you recollect 3z by 3z minus 1 whole square. If you practice, it is not difficult. Please practice many times and tending. Be used to it. Be familiar to it. Again and again do it. Okay. See how many times you have sung Janagana Mana. Can you forget it? So why not you can practice many things which you have to do in the life. Practice it so that they become part of your life. They become tip of your tanks. So let us go ahead. Second one we found in the just in the above part here. 2 Z square plus 2 square Z whole divided by Z minus 2 whole cube. All these things my dear friends we did for some practice. Very similarly, very similarly. Please, please go ahead. With some more functions, find the z transformations of of e raised to n sine two n n theta. First, you find sine n theta, then damping rule. Okay. Second one, second one. A raised to n e raised to minus a divided by n factorial. So this e raised to minus a is a constant. So first, find one by n factorial, then use the damping rule. So with this, we are ready to go ahead for the next observation. Before we go for the next observation, always I tell that for the next concept, again first let us observe. Again first let us observe. After observation, I want you to write uh, some rules which uh, I shall help you. First of all, suppose I am in a n function. So I am trying to tell you notations. So if I change n here correspondingly n should change. It is shifting I am doing. So if I change n to n plus n plus 1. Correspondingly, correspondingly wherever n is there, wherever n is there. So wherever n is there n plus 1. If I go on writing. The corresponding change, corresponding change will be 
Tn plus 1. So similarly, if I write, if I write Un plus 2 is a, wherever n is there, n plus 2. So on and so forth. In general, suppose if in general, in general, what is Un plus k? So I am moving k steps ahead. This is n plus k whole square. This n square is just for namesake. Naam ke vaste. Instead of n square, n cube. Here cube, here cube, here cube. Similarly, I can write negative suffixes also here. For example, if it is n minus 1, it should be n minus 1 here also. So let us get, we are getting used to the notations. n minus 2, n minus 2 whole square. In general, n minus k, n minus k whole square. So can you help me to write one more example then? Can you help me to write one more example? We can take any n function, whatever you like, something in n you write. Suppose I, I write 1 by n factorial. So can you help me to write n plus 1? Wherever n is there, you write n plus 1. But these symbols help us a lot because mathematics is a language of symbols. So on and so forth. In general, n plus k is 1 by n plus k factorial. Can you have negative here? Un minus 1. Un minus 1. 1 by n minus 1 factorial. Un minus 2. 1 by n minus 2 factorial. In general, un minus k, 1 by n minus k factorial. So, we are getting used to some changes in suffixes en, but which help us, which help us for this one now. What is the meaning of this? Shifting, shifting un, we are shifting un either to the right side or left side. Suppose if I write un to un minus k, this is known as right shifting. If I shift un to un plus k, this we call it as left shifting. So this change of origin, that's all. Left shifting theorem, right shifting theorem, we are ready to write two important theorems now. Here we write. So theorems are only for statements. Uh, theorems also known as shifting theorems. Pause here. In life, pause is also very important. Unless until you take a pause and look back what you have done carefully and go ahead with confidence. That is known as Simhao Lokan. What this lion Simhao does, it takes 10 steps and looks back with a confidence. So what path I have encroached so uh, walked so far is very nice. I'll go ahead. So similarly, what we have done so far, you started with the definition of Z transform n function to Z function. Found some basic transformation functions u of n square, z of n, z of n square, z of n cube, z of n raised to 4, z of a raised to n, z of constant. So then get, got used to it by some example, z of 2 raised to n, z of cos n theta, z of sin n theta, hyperbolic n theta, z of a raised to n, z of phi raised to n. So now properties, slowly properties you are doing. One of the properties is uh, shifting properties. That is, we call it as theorem. What this tells is, property means if and then. If if a n function has got this z function, then if at all I change this uh, n to, if at all I change this n to n minus k. Suppose if at all I change this n to n minus k. So what will be the corresponding change? 
the corresponding change is to this u of z you will have to multiply this change extra z raised to minus k so because you are making n minus k n minus k in the previous just uh, talk to five minutes back we call it as a right shifting theorem so there are naturally two shifting theorems right shifting theorem left shifting theorem for example for example k equal to uh, i can write 1 2 3 4 even 0 means same suppose if i write k equal to 3 okay z transformation of un minus 3 so only k equal to you have to write wherever k is there 3 so z transformation of that is z raised to z raised to minus 3 so 3 here makes it 3 here of course this corresponding everything is change into z transformation u of z as it is can you write some more for me z transformation of un minus 2 so the original u of z you multiplied by z raised to 2 minus 2 z transformation of un minus 10 so the original u of z you have to multiply by z raised to minus 10 z transformation of u of n minus 1 so the original u of z you multiply by you multiply by z raised to minus 1 so very very similarly instead of instead of n minus k if i write n plus k you will get something different of course here that becomes left shifting theorem so that let us write left left shifting shifting theorem again if then if uh, z transformation of some n function is some z function then then what you will get z transformation of u n u n plus k plus k so what will be the corresponding change what will be the corresponding change you will have to you will have to multiply or you have to subtract what will be the corresponding change let us see this is the corresponding change one corresponding one corresponding change and this remains the same but inside again you have to go on subtracting u not u1 by z minus u2 by z square and so on if it is k k minus 1 is the last u k minus 1 upon z raised to k minus 1 let us get used to this by writing some k equal to 3 2 1 so z transformation of for example z transformation of u n plus 3 so z cube to the function u of z we to go on subtracting u not u1 by z minus u2 by z square stop it because if it is 3 one less than that you have to stop it here now this uh, un plus 2 z square because it is 2 it is 2 here to the original function u of z minus u not minus u1 by z if it is 2 you have to stop at 1 stop it here z transformation of z transformation of un plus 3 just now we did un plus 3 let us let us do un plus 1 z raised to 1 because it is 1 here 1 original function minus u not because here 1 less than 1 minus 1 is u not stop here so these two especially will be very 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 useful for the examples point of view examples point of view so let us use this so important examples are asked using these functions let us find some examples using these shifting theorems so examples 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 on shifting theorem they are simple as well as important 
for your examination point of view don't forget find find z transformation of or show that z transformation of this uh, n function is uh, e raised to 1 by z hence hence compute z transformations of 1 by n plus 1 factorial so u n to n plus 1 shifting theorems and one more n plus 2 factorial let us get used to this first of all we are asked to find z transformation of 1 by n factorial but what is the basic definition of z transformation summation u n z raised to minus n n equal to 0 to infinity every day once you should write this now instead of u n i will write z transformation of 1 by n factorial so here also i have to write 1 by n factorial now i will expand this summation go on putting n equal to 0 1 2 3 and add them for n equal to 0 z raised to minus 0 divided by 0 factorial both are 1 plus summation means you have to go on adding plus 1 and 1 here z raised to minus 1 by 1 factorial z raised to minus 2 by 2 factorial z raised to minus 3 by 3 factorial and so on and so forth in finite series let me simplify and write in a better fashion on the right hand side 1 plus 1 upon z upon 1 factorial something square 1 upon z square upon 2 factorial raised to 3 raised to 3 upon 3 factorial and so on but but if you recall if you recall what is e raised to x 1 plus x by 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on and compare the right hand side here if you compare these two here exactly whatever x is there it is 1 by z so that means this expansion this whole expansion converges to x equal to 1 by z so let us write let us write using the formula wherever x is there if you write 1 by z wherever x is there if you write 1 by z e raised to 1 by z you get so we found we found z transformation of z transformation of e raised to 1 by z now shifting theorem what is z transformation of un plus 1 what is z transformation of un plus 1 it is if it is 1 it is raised to 1 to the given function you have to subtract u naught okay so it is raised to 1 here so but uh, what is un plus 1 since this is our un wherever n is there n plus 1 makes us n factorial becomes n plus 1 factorial and this we are asked to find which is z into bracket u of z is this is our u of z z function for 1 by n factorial in z transform decoding it to z function we get e raised to 1 by z coded here coded here so that e of u of z is 1 by e raised to 1 by z now what is u naught see here see here un un is 1 by n factorial if you go on putting n equal to 0 1 2 and so on n equal to 0 n equal to 0 1 by 0 factorial is 1 n equal to 1 1 by 1 factorial is 1 n equal to 2 u2 is 1 by 2 factorial that means it is 1 by 2 suppose one more u3 1 by 3 factorial that means what if at all i know n function no harm no fun no problem at all i can go on function uh, finding 
u0, u1, u2, u3 and so on. So now I need u0 value which is 1 by 0 factorial which is 1. So I go back and write u0 value is uh, 1 by 0 factorial that is 1. So find an answer for z of 1 by n plus 1 factorial is a z as it is e raised to 1 by z as it is this becomes minus 1. Let us go to the next one which is a z of un plus 2 formula which is according to the left shifting theorem if it is 2 it is z square to this u of z you are subtracting some things u naught u1 by z and stop because if it is 2 you have to stop at 1. Now u naught already you found u naught already you found u naught is 1 u1 is also 1 so using both of these I will write z square u of z is a watch which we have found just now this is our this is our u of z 1 by z so instead of u of z I have to write 1 by z minus u naught is 1 and u1 is also 1 so if I simplify z of un plus 2 so un is 1 by n factorial un plus 2 is wherever n is there n plus 2 1 by n plus 2 factorial noting this if I write this as 1 by n plus 2 factorial you can go up to n plus 3 factorial n plus 4 factorial no problem this corresponding z function one thing you noted here that we found only un and afterwards using right shifting left shifting theorems we are finding next un plus 1 un plus 2 minus 1 minus 1 by z go ahead for un plus 3 without fail as a homework go ahead for it now similarly similarly suppose uh, if i apply the if i apply the same to same theorem to one more <laughs> next example important examples uh, if uh, z transformation of n square sometimes it is not given because you know it z square plus z by z minus 1 whole cube find find z of n plus 1 whole square so un un plus 1 z of n plus 2 whole square and so on now let us write let us write so you are using here shifting theorems don't forget you are using here shifting theorems let us write un equal to n square let us note down that what are the values of un equal to n square so let us note down the values of uh, sometimes it takes time n equal to 0 0 n equal to 1 1 n equal to 2 2 so given the n function you can go on finding corresponding u0 u1 u2 but corresponding if at all you know suppose only z function coming directly here is difficult now given given z of un where in this case that un is uh, n square we know that we are used to it that it is z square plus z upon z minus 1 whole cube now we want we want z transformation of un plus 1 where the depth shifting theorem tells that z raised to 1 to the original function so this is our this is our u of z corresponding z function you have to note down this so now correspondingly the left shifting theorem shifting theorem by shifting theorem we write to the original function we have to subtract some more values because we have to stop here because if it is 1 
here you have to stop at zero. Already we have noticed that u naught is also zero. If you find u naught is zero, well then what is the answer? Z of u n plus one. So wherever n is there, n plus one. Wherever n is there, n plus one. If you make it, u n plus one is n plus one whole square equal to z into u of z is here. Z square plus z upon z minus one whole cube. Minus zero because just now you found zero here for u naught. You have go went on substituting to the given n function n equal to zero, n equal to one, and so on. So u naught equal to zero you have to substitute. So correspondingly we got we got the answer of z of n plus one whole square is equal to z into z square plus z divided by z minus one. So you can even uh, <coughs> go one step ahead to find uh, directly. Also, you can find, but using damping rule means you have to find like this. Sometimes you can multiply inside here to write z cube plus z by z square upon no problem z minus one whole cube. Now, how about n plus two z by z of also we shall write also. Z of u n plus two using shifting theorem two means z square to the original function. Let us go on subtracting some u functions u not u n by z so on and so forth. But you have to stop here because it is two means one stopping here. So both u not and u n were found. U not value u not value zero u n value one. So hence hence. So I think uh, after this example we shall stop. Hence, here I had to write zero. Here I had to write one. So that finishes z transform of u n plus two means uh, n plus two whole square z square into original z function. We have to write z square plus z upon z minus one whole cube minus zero minus one upon z. So you can simplify this a bit, but uh, no problem. You can go on writing as it is. You cross multiply and you can write as it is. So similarly, similarly, uh, if at all, if at all, you can find. Please try this. If u uh, n is a sine of n theta, and you know the formula of this, find find z transform of u n plus one. Find it without fail for me, please, without fail. So today we learned. Uh, today we learned shifting theorems, and based on that, some examples. Dear students, I'll end this by asking a question, a small question, a small question, and that will become a first part of next lesson. So given u n equal to, for example, some n cube, you can go on finding. You can go on finding u naught, u one. U two, U three, because you have to go on substituting n equal to zero. Suppose n cube plus two, I write, then something different. Zero plus two, one cube plus two, three, two cube is eight plus two, ten, and so on. Now suppose uh, I write some z function. Now what is the corresponding uh, z function for this? Is if I take the transformation, corresponding z function. Okay. Uh, if at all I take uh, uh, some z function. Which is a z cube plus four z square plus uh, z upon z minus one raised to four plus a two upon two z by z minus one. From question is suppose you don't know this part. Read carefully. You don't know this part, but you know the corresponding z part. Can you come from here to here directly? Let me ask that question now. Suppose suppose. You know some u of z, which is something like z is to four plus some z cube minus z square plus two z divided by some z minus three raised to some four. So can you come directly without knowing the u n corresponding u n value? Can you come directly? What is u not u one u two maybe up to u infinity? Final initial value up to final value. Is it possible? 
don't know u n, but directly from z function to corresponding u naught, u one, u two, u three, because sometimes we don't want u n. We want only initial values u naught, u one, u two, u three for our communication theory for our signal processing. My dear students, answer is, answer is, answer is. Uh, sorry. Answer is S. The answer is written in two theorems, known as known as answer is yes for this. So two theorems which are known as initial value and final value theorems. So we shall take pause in the next class. I will be dealing with these two theorems and corresponding examples. So far from n to z we have done. Also we will go from z to n back. Which are inverse jet transforms. Once you learn inverse jet transforms, we can solve some differential equations. In discrete terminologies, they are known as difference equations, which become the base for your signals and processings. Till by till then, goodbye. Do the examples which I have given, and take care. Bye bye.